Hey everyone, it's Karen from Mayfly Life and today I'm going to show you how to make beeswax wraps. This will help uh, eliminate some of the plastic uh, cling wrap that you use and uh, I use mine uh, basically for uh, like wrapping uh, bowls or whatever and you, what you do is you'll, you'll measure it and cut it according to the sizes that you want because uh, you can make varying sizes. So your best bet is to uh, take your, uh, this here I've got is a cotton uh, quarter, uh, quarter end and um, it's, it's important to use cotton because you want it to be a breathable uh, uh, material so it's good to use cotton and all I did was with this one, just for demonstration purposes, uh, it's a small one, it could be for a small bowl, uh, this is 8 by 8 square and uh, what you should do is measure out um, a piece of cloth two inches larger than the bowl or container that you want to use as a wrap. Uh, so if it's going to be a round, uh, if it's going to be a round bowl, you want to measure out the circumference if you want it uh, round or if you want it square. It doesn't matter, but give it at least two inches of overlap over the lip of the bowls. And then you just, you know, just cut out the, the round or if you want to leave it square, cut it out in a square. So this is a relatively easy um, recipe. Um, this one is just using jojoba oil and beeswax. And, uh, you know, if you want a little bit more stiffer, uh, stiffer type of uh, uh, wax mix mixture, then what you're going to do is you're going to add tree resin to it as well. And uh, But uh, I right now uh, don't have tree resin, so I've been using uh, the beeswax and jojoba oil. So uh, let's get started. So basically what you're going to need are um, three items really. You're going to need your cotton cloth or your cotton uh, piece that you've, cut, that you've cut out. You're going to need jojoba oil and you're going to need beeswax. Tools you're going to need are of course a, a cookie sheet and you're going to need a brush. This one you need to uh, use a brush that you're going to dedicate solely to this for beeswax for spreading the beeswax after you've heated it. So uh, once, once uh, all the beeswax and, uh, has melted you're going to spread it out and I'll show you how to do that shortly. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to put your, uh, your cloth, your cotton uh, uh, swatch that you've pulled out and you're going to set it face down, uh, good side down. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take, you're going to grate, if you have uh, beeswax pellets, then you can just sprinkle it on. But I have whole beeswax, so basically what I'm doing is I'm just sprinkling it on and I'm just dispersing it all over the cloth. Like you don't need a lot, but you want to have enough that you're going to be able to cover it from one end to the other of the, the cloth that you've cut out. Next what you're going to do is you're going to take a little bit of the jojoba oil in a spoon and you're going to sprinkle it on. You're just going to spread it all over the cloth. So I've got a, probably about two teaspoons worth and just liberally pour it on. So now that you've got this all spread, what you're going to do is you're going to place it in a 200 degree oven and you're going to need to watch it carefully because it doesn't take long. What you want to do is melt the wax. Okay, I'm back. And yep. The beeswax is completely melted now and so what I'm going to do is there's some here on the pan and I'm just going to pick it up and I'm going to spread it out because you want to make sure that you cover everything. You want to make sure that it's nicely covered so you're going to go one way and then another way just to ensure that you have covered everything. Now I've seen uh, a lot of a lot of blogs stating to uh, you got to hang dry it, you've got to get pinking shears. You know what? If you don't have pinking shears to give you that fancy little scalloped edge, 
don't worry about it. Use a pair of normal scissors. And what I do is I'll weight it in the air slightly as it, uh, as it creates sort of like a, a small semi breeze. And then the, the cloth starts getting uh, stiff. See? And basically what you can use these for are if you want to wrap cheese, uh, you want to wrap a bowl uh, of leftovers or whatever, or if you want to, you know, have a big enough sheet that will allow you to put on a bowl to uh, uh, rise your bread and so forth. That's what these are me meant for instead of you using the, the cling wrap. Um, you can't use this on meat because there's no way of cleaning these properly to ensure that you get all the bacteria off of them. And basically what you're going to do when you, after you've wrapped whatever it is that you've wrapped, you're going to um, just wash it with, with cool water and a little bit of soap uh, and just wipe it down and then let it, let it dry on your counter or hang dry it if you want. And this, this can last for quite a while. Um, so, you know, give it a try. It's, it's not, uh, not difficult to make and it's easy enough. Um, secret though, best type of fabrics to get are very smooth, um, thin, uh, the thinnest possible, tightest weave that you can get. And that's uh, like the cotton is ideal. Uh, so, you know, try and go with that. And it's like I said, if you don't have pinking shears, don't worry about it. Uh, they're not going to look exactly like what those commercially made, uh, you know, beeswax wraps are. So don't be surprised. But this is a good alternative to cut down your consumption of uh, cling wrap and plastic wraps. Uh, so basically, that's all it is in a nutshell. I've made a few of these and uh, really, really excited about it. And I've been using uh, mine for a bit now. And uh, but yeah. Give it a try. It's good for the earth. Catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.